All right, so now we're going to talk about the Adams Moulton methods. And uh, again, the basic idea behind the Adams Moulton methods is that you have uh, the solutions at the previous time, but you also sort of pretend as if you know the solution at uh, the new time, which you're actually trying to compute. Uh, and you fit a polynomial to that, and then you use that polynomial to approximate the integral of, uh, again, uh, you want to compute this integral from tk to tk plus 1, right, of f <coughs> along the solution. Okay, and the reason, of course, why you want to do that is because that plus y at k then is a good approximation of y at k plus 1 by <coughs> the... Um, Actually, that's an equality, right? Well, y at tk plus 1 is equal to y at tk plus this integral, um, um, which is just, again, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so, all right. So these are examples of implicit methods. because what will happen is that the, the new solution will show up both on the left and right hand side, so you have to solve some sort of nonlinear equation. And so we have to solve a nonlinear equation. to obtain uh, yk plus 1. Well, in general, you have to solve a nonlinear equation. Of course, it depends on the form and like of the vector field, whether or not uh, the equation is nonlinear. OK, anyway, so, um, so let's call that interpolating polynomial qm. Right, so qm interpolates uh, f tk plus 1, yk plus 1 all the way up to um, f uh, tk minus m plus 1, yk minus m plus 1. Right, again, the main difference is that you've added this additional point, uh, f at tk plus 1, yk plus 1. Okay, uh, but everything else sort of conceptually remains very similar. qm of s is equal to sum from l equals to 0 to m, right? It's just that because you have an additional point, now uh, you get a high order um, interpolating polynomial, right? But conceptually, it's like it's still the same basic idea. You have data at a bunch of points, you interpolate that, use that interpolant to, it's like to uh, approximate the integral of, of f, it's like along the solution curve, and then you use that to construct a numerical method. All right, so product uh, j, not e j equals to 0, j not equal to l, m of s minus t to the k plus 1, minus j over tk plus 1 minus l minus tk plus 1 minus j. And then f evaluated at tk plus 1 minus l, yk plus 1 minus l. Okay, and then this gives you the method yk plus 1 is equal to yk plus h times the sum from L equals to 0 to M of coefficients. Let me just call that CL. Okay, F at TK plus 1 minus L, YK plus 1 minus L, where CL is the integral from uh, TK to TK plus 1 of this Lagrange polynomial product J equals to 0 to M but j not equal to l of s minus tk plus 1 minus j over tk plus 1 minus l minus tk plus 1 minus j. Okay, ds. Okay, all right, so that's sort of the general form. It's like of what are called adams moulton methods. And the advantage of an adams moulton method versus an adams bashford method with the same number of steps is that the Adams-Moulton method is uh, one 
sort of order higher in terms of its accuracy. Okay, but at a cost again in general of being implicit and having you to solve uh, some sort of nonlinear equation in order to extract the value of y k plus one. So, all right. So in any case, so that's the general framework. Let's uh, look at examples of this, uh, just so that you have a better handle as to what is going on. Okay, so let's look at the m equals to zero case for the atoms molten methods. Okay, so what happens here is that uh, you obviously have the solution at tk, and uh, you know, you're trying to get the solution at tk plus one, uh, and with all the atoms molten methods, you're going to assume you know what the function value is at time k, tk plus one, uh, and you're going to use that uh, in order to construct your um, polynomial approximation of the function um, in the integrand. It's like, or the integrand. It's like in the um, fundamental theorem of calculus, all right. But when m equals to zero, it's like you're not actually even going to use it's like the uh, the solutions you had at the previous times. So you're just going to use the solution at the new time, which you don't really know. Okay, so then the integral from tk to tk plus 1 of this polynomial, degree 0 polynomial, uh, is just going to be equal to h times f at k plus 1. Okay, so this gives you a method which is that the solution at new time is the solution at old time plus h times f at k plus 1, which is just uh, yk plus h times f at tk yk. So this is uh, what is known as the backward Euler method. So the sort of the zero uh, step Adams bash uh, Adams Moulton method. is the backward Euler method. Uh, and uh, so this is an example of an implicit method. So it's an implicit, uh, and it's a first order accurate method. Okay, um, so that's perhaps not so exciting. So let's just look at the m equals to two case as well. Uh, so m equals one case, all right? So m equals one case. Now you again have the solution at t k plus one, but you also take advantage of the uh, the previously computed solution at time t k. So you want to construct this linear interpolant and then approximate the integral, all right? So the integral from t k to t k plus one of q one s ds, right, then it's equal to just the um, trapezoidal rule applied to this problem, right, so it's just h over 2 uh, fk um, plus fk plus 1. Okay, so this gives you the following method, yk plus 1 is equal to yk plus h over 2 f at tk yk plus f at tk plus 1 yk plus 1. Okay, and this is uh, what is called the trapezoidal rule as well, but for numerical ODEs. So the uh, one step Adams Moulton method is the sort of implicit second order accurate. Trapezoidal rule. Okay, so more generally speaking, then uh, the local truncation error, right? The local truncation error for an M step Adams Moulton method. is uh, big O of h to the m plus 2. So that is to say that it is m plus 1 order in accuracy. OK. Um, and this is in contrast to the m step adams bashford method, which omits uh, using this unknown uh, sort of solution at the new time, uh, which is only M order accurate, but it's explicit, right? So that's the trade-off you have, is that you could either have the M-step 
Adam's molten method, which is M order accurate and explicit versus the M step Adam's molten method, um, which is uh, implicit but order M plus one. Okay, so you're trading off implicit versus explicit for one higher order. Okay, all right, so let me just stop here for now.